Welcome to Family Maker Camp. Um, sorry about the weird camera there, of course, just as we go live. Anyway, hello, my name is Sandy Roberts and um, I am a STEM educator and makerspace coordinator and author of the big book of Maker Camp projects. And I'm Kathy Ciceri and I also teach enrichment classes and I write um, books about projects that kids can make with everyday stuff. Right. So we have teamed up for the first time today. We've known each other for years, seen each other at Maker Fairs. So this is really exciting to get to team up for our first Maker Camp project together. Um, and I actually remember years ago at Maker Fair for one of the educator days when you brought your fabulous uh, jumping frog paper circuit project to that educators day and taught everybody how to do it. And that was so much fun. So I'm excited to get to share that with everybody today. Um, so we are obviously doing light up circuits and light up origami today. So I will be sharing with you this little, um, oh, can you see his light? A little um, lightning bug and a pretty light up butterfly with light up antennas and Kathy. Yep, I'm gonna be doing the origami jumping frog which lights up when you, of course, not when I'm demonstrating it. <laughs> Always. Lights up when you squeeze it and then it hops. So very cool. I like that that one is like super functional and fun and light up. So, yeah. um, so let's, uh, we are following along in the comments. So hopefully if we have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Um, we are gonna start today with our simplest project to get everybody going, which is our little uh, light up uh, firefly. This one is easy enough that even young kids are able to do it. Uh, I guess we should go over our supplies, right? I always forget to talk about supplies first. Um, do you want to go over supplies or should I? Um, you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so today, really easy supplies. You do need some origami paper. Um, if you don't have origami paper, you can just use regular copy paper and cut it down into squares. Pretty easy to do, but fun colors are always great. You are going to need a um, LED which I'm gonna show you real quick for my big box of LEDs. That's these guys, they're the tiny little light emitting diodes. Um, if you don't happen to have these sitting around, you have a couple of options. You can go to Maker Shed and they have all kinds of great kits by Brown Dog Gadgets and their own kits that have LEDs and all the supplies you need. Or you can, a la Scrappy Circuits, hack a tea light. Um, you can take apart these little electric tea lights you can get at the dollar store and inside is an LED that you can use for these projects. So if you can't get your hands on, you know, the official supplies, hack a tea light. And if you haven't checked out Scrappy Circuits on Family Maker Camp, you got to do that. Um, so you need several LEDs. The lightning bug uses just one, both the frog and the butterfly use two. So total for all of today's projects, you need five of these LEDs in whatever colors you like. You generally want to match your LEDs though. We'll go over why in a little bit. You will need some batteries. These are coin cell batteries, um, commonly sold as 2032 or 2025. These are three volt batteries. Again, you can get these in um, stores. You can get them at dollar stores or you can order them online. So you're gonna need those. And then you are gonna need some way to let that electricity flow. We've got a couple options. I believe, Kathy, you're using classic copper tape, yes? Right. And same thing, I, I have it in a plastic bag and make my own dispenser. Yeah, because this will get everywhere. <laughs> Keep it in the it plastic It unravels bag. off of the roll, yeah. Oh, yeah, I made the mistake with um, the other option you have, which this is maker tape that you can get in the maker shed. It is a fabric version. Both of these, the whole idea is that they ha have embedded metal, so electricity can flow through them at low voltage and they have a conductive adhesive on them. So uh, you can stick it to paper and still conduct electricity. So you've got your copper tape, or your maker tape, very similar. One's metal, one's fabric. You can also, in a pinch, use aluminum foil. Just cut strips of aluminum foil and use a glue stick. Works great. Um, some other great things to have on hand. A little bit of scotch tape I find is helpful. A little bit of uh, invisible tape can be helpful for holding things in place while you work. Um, needle, needle nose pliers um, <laughs> to twist the ends of your uh, leads on your LEDs if you need to make them fit. So those are always good to have on hand. And then I like to keep some binder clips around um, because as you can kind of see in my butterfly, that's what's keeping this circuit closed. Um, so it's basically acting like a switch. So those are very useful. 
Um, always a pair of scissors to cut your um, copper tape or cut your maker tape. Very good. And you can, of course, go crazy with decorating with markers or sequins, stickers, Google eyes, um, as you wish. Did I get everything? Yep. Yep. I think so. Okay. I'm sure I'll remember stuff as we go because <laughs> inevitably that's how it works. Um, okay. Um, so let's talk circuits real quick and get started with our first project. I'm going to attempt to switch camera views. Let's cross our fingers that everything works the way it's supposed to. Um, I'm a little nervous about it today, but let's see. Here we go. Switching cameras. And yay, look at that. It worked. Okay. So I am over here. So circuits, and I'm going to do this because I'm going to be upside down. Okay. I think, no, I'm pretty good. All right. When we talk about circuits, there are three things that circuits need. They need a power source, which in this case is our battery. They need a way for electricity to flow, which in this case is gonna be our maker tape, our aluminum foil, or our classic copper tape. And it needs a load, something to light up. And in this case, we've got our little um, LED. Now, many loads like this LED that we're gonna make light up are directional because, and so are our batteries. So we have our, let's see, can I do this right? Okay, here's my battery. That's our power source. In this case, it's three volts. And that's the amount of energy or electricity that that battery is going to put out. It has a positive and a negative side. And you can actually see this. I'm gonna pop one out for you. And I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, <laughs> so we have, you can see that this is clearly labeled with a plus. Okay, so that's the positive side of our battery. The other side is not labeled. They're usually just rough. That's our negative side. So that's our power source. Um, you need to pair the voltage that your um, battery is providing with your, um, oops, and see, I'm upside down. I knew this was gonna mess me up, with the load because you have to have the right voltage for your load. Luckily, our little LEDs um, actually need three volts. So we're gonna have our copper tape. This is a basic, what we call series circuit. Let's see if I can do it. Short leg, long leg. Okay. So this is going to be negative and this is going to be positive. If you look at an LED, you can see that one leg is longer than the other. One lead is longer than the other. And that is because the longer one is the positive and the shorter one is negative. So you have to make sure these all line up properly. If they don't, you're not gonna get a circuit that works because the energy is directional, it has to flow. So if I just slide my battery in between the leads of my LED and I line up my positive and negative, I should get that to glow. And you can see it's glowing. Okay, so that's the basics of a series circuit. We'll also be making a parallel circuit a little bit later and we can kind of talk about that as we get to that. So did I get everything? Was that pretty good, Kathy? Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I want to make sure I don't forget stuff. So let's get started with our first project, which is our little lightning bug. Now, he doesn't light up until you actually squeeze his body together. And that basically forms a little switch to make his bottom light up as lightning bugs like to do. So where's my paper? I don't have any more black origami paper, so we're just gonna go with um, blue today. I like blue, you may have noticed. Okay, am I good? I'm good, all right. We are going to remember which way we're folding. Yes, so we're gonna take the uh, one point of our square of paper and fold it down to make a little triangle like this, okay? Now we are going to just kind of mark where the center is by folding it the other way. Now mine is double-sided. If you are using origami paper that is not colored on both sides, you would want to start with your uncolored side up. So I fold and unfold on this one. And now I'm gonna form my, I'm gonna flip and form my wings. I kind of want to start um, all the way from the top and fold down and out just a little bit. Okay. Increase that really nicely. I'm going to do the same over here. 
and I'm going to try to get them as even as I can. It's not the end of the world if they aren't. And I'm going to give that a good crease. Okay, now we're going to form the head. Flip. You're going to fold down about an inch, so about like your thumbnail. You can kind of see that. Fold down about an inch and give that a good crease and then fold back up about three quarters of the way. Now, if you wanna put something like Google eyes or whatever on this, you may need to plan to do the head a little bit uh, bigger. Okay, now we are going to just fold in the rest of our body. And this is where you get to kind of decide how skinny or fat you want your fun little bug to be. The important thing is you wanna fold over just a little bit. If you can see here, I'm gonna zoom for you. So you can see right here, I folded over the head piece just a little bit to kind of tuck it in and keep it all in one piece. I'm gonna do the same on the other side again, just trying to be as symmetrical as I can. Okay. This is the tough fold. You gotta kind of crunch it down there. Okay. And we're gonna just bring them back over the other way and crease. And there we go, now we have our little, our little firefly. And that's the basic folds. That's the, this is one of the easiest origami folds I've ever done. So I like this one because it is really easy for people getting started. I'm gonna zoom in a bit because now we're gonna add our light. I've got a little LED and I'm gonna just take my needle nose pliers and I'm going to turn these to make them a little smaller so that they fit on the back. Now. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Some folks, uh, you know, will will do the positive and negative differently, so that they're, it's easy to tell which is which. These are not very good needle nose pliers I'm using today. I apologize. Um, you can twist them in opposite directions. Usually, I use a permanent marker just to uh, help me know which is which. But I do not know where my permanent marker has gone today. I probably dropped it on the floor somewhere. So I'm just gonna be good at remembering. And I remember that this was my long one. So we are gonna attach this to the back of our lightning bug. I'm just gonna kind of show you that, okay? So I'm just gonna cut myself a piece of the maker tape and hope that it doesn't go crazy on me. I keep a rubber band on it because it really does. It can get quite unwieldy. So I'm just gonna kind of measure if I go from here around about midway to the back, you don't have to get too you know, crazy about it. Okay, so, oh, see, I said I was gonna remember. Yep, I do. All right, normally I would mark this, but like I said, I have misplaced my marker. I'm going to go ahead and peel the back from my maker tape. I do not wanna take all the backing off a little at a time. Um, you will discover if you've ever used this before that if you take it all off at once, you run the risk of um, having it curl up on itself. So let's see, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting the tape down onto the lead of my LED. I'm doing my positive one first. I'm gonna flip my bug and just bring this right on over. And I'm just gonna kind of fold it in a little bit Keep it neat, fold it back out. At least I say I'm going to. All right, and just write down the body there, okay? And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side for my negative side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a quick measure, cut my tape. And take off my backing again. I really have got to get to the point where I um, <laughs> don't bite my nails as much as I do, but these are stressful times, so. I find it's do? easier if you peel the tape off the backing rather than the backing off of the tape. That is a really good tip. That is a really good point. Um, that is one of the most challenging things it seems to be, is like just getting the tape off the backing. <laughs> But I like that idea of taking the tape off the backing rather than trying to get the backing off the tape. So here I am again, I'm just making a nice little line of tape on the inside. 
And you'll notice I'm keeping them separate. That's really important because if these were to cross or if my leads here crossed, I would short my circuit. And basically the electricity would just not bother going into my load, not going into my LED and it wouldn't light up and that wouldn't be much fun at all. Okay, at this point you wanna test, <laughs> test, test, test. I should have wired this correctly. I did, yay. Okay, so now we are gonna attach our battery. And to do that, we are just gonna take a little piece of tape again, and we're gonna fold it into a loop. You've probably done this to hang posters before. You're right, Kathy, that is much easier to pull the tape off of the adhesive. So I'm just gonna make a little loop with the sticky side out. There we go. And since this is my positive, I've confirmed that that's my positive lead. I'm gonna put my sticky tape here and I'm gonna stick it with the positive down onto the inside of my Firefly. Now you may decide depending on how you folded this that you wanna fold these back a little bit to give it more exposure to the battery. It kind of depends on, on how, how wide you've made your, um, your lovely bug. But now when I fold this over, there we go. His little tail lights up. And so every time you kind of squeeze him, his tail will light up. And if you want to, you can absolutely use, where'd it go? If you want to keep it lit, like if say you're using it as a decoration, you can just get a little binder clip here. And you can see I'm just using the binder clip on the bottom to kind of keep him, <laughs> to keep him together. So there you go. That's your first uh, project. Pretty simple. Okay. And I am going to cancel that and join you again. All right. That went pretty well. No technical difficulties. Yay. Awesome. All right. Okay. So here I am. So um, I'm just going to give credit for this origami jumping frog to one of the readers of my book, Paper Inventions, who um, sent me this project on Twitter and then gave me permission to um, use it. And I'm going to go through the folding pretty fast. There are some tricky bits, but there are instructions on the Make website, and um, I'm sure that they will put the link somewhere so that you can see that. So don't worry if you can't follow as I'm going through, because I'm going to go through pretty fast. Um, and the idea behind this is that you press it and the eyes light up and then it hops. And I made a bigger one so that you can see it a little better. But when you make it out of, so um, I actually use regular copy paper in different colors. This one's not going to light up. Let's see. How about this one? Oh, no. There we go. This one's lighting up. So this is, um, okay. I should back up a little bit. Normally you use origami paper, which comes in squares. Um, this is made out of half a square. And since I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper, first I cut it into a square and then I cut the square in half. So you get two pieces of paper that you can make the frog from, from one piece of copy paper. And for the demonstration, I'm using uh, 11 by five and a half, just to make it a little bigger because I do not have zoom on my camera. And I'm going to switch now to my top down camera. There we go. And because I'm also upside down, I will hopefully fold this upside down so that it makes sense to you. So this is the top and we're gonna start by folding it down and then fold it back once. And this is going to be the head of the frog. And then we open it up. And then you're going to take the two corners and fold them diagonally. And you can just use the folds and the edges as your guide. And like all origami, the sharper you make those creases, the better it works. So your head is very easy to form once you've got this um, diagonal fold. You're just gonna push in these two sides and there is your pointy 
nose on your frog. To get the legs, similar to the firefly, you're gonna fold this up. So just a little bit of it sticks out. That's one leg and that's the other leg. So you can see that is the top of the frog. So now we're going on to the back leg. You're going to fold this edge to the middle. And then you're gonna fold each side into the middle. I've heard this described as a cupboard door type of fold. And you might want to um, open up the front legs there a little bit to get in there. So you're gonna fold the whole thing to the middle. And make that nice sharp crease and then do the same thing with the other side. Okay, and then fold this bottom up one more time. And I'm actually gonna pause here for a second. The thing that gives this jumping frog its spring is this kind of accordion fold here. If you are doing this project with younger kids, because this is where the tricky part is to make the back legs, you can just accordion fold it right here and just have, um, the back leg just kind of suggested rather than sticking out. So if this gets too difficult for you, you can just skip right to the accordion fold and do that right here. In order to get these back legs that are sticking out, you are going to open it up a little bit and you see these two flaps here, you're gonna pull these out and fold them into a point. And this is where origami is kind of hard to figure out, but you're kind of, folding this in half and making a point and then smashing it flat. And to me, it kind of looks like when you make a uh, folded paper boat. So you're gonna do that on the other side. You're gonna grab this corner here, pull it out. You're gonna fold that into a point and then smash it down. So there's your paper boat stage. And then at this point, you are going to fold it along this diagonal line and fold these both down and they are going to form a diamond. Now to make the back legs a little skinnier, we're gonna fold this in half, which means taking this edge and folding it so it matches that diagonal again. Comes out at an angle like that, an angle like that. So this is where we're gonna put the accordion fold in. And again, if you didn't wanna do the back legs, you could just do it with it just squared off. We're gonna take the feet and bring them up to the nose. So there's the nose. Smash it good. And then fold it back down to make that accordion fold. And there's your frog. And at this point, of course, you have to test, make sure that it Pops. Let's see. Uh -huh. Well, he's hopping a tiny bit. I will admit it is very humid where I live. And when it gets humid, the paper gets a little soft and it will not hop as nice, nicely as on a cold day when it's a little crisper. But I'm going to just move on to the next stage. So now you're going to have to dissect your frog. You're going to have to open it back up in order to put the electronics inside. And let me, I have one that I partially dissected already. And I kind of just made two little cuts to make it easier to open to show you what I'm doing. But you're gonna open up the head and in order to get to the head, you're gonna have to unfold the back legs a little bit, but you're gonna just fold them right back up. So let me see if I can get this on the camera. So the way that this works is you have your battery with the positive side up in this case, and the LED wires form kind of like a clamshell and you're going to be pushing them together with this kind of a motion to make the light light up. So I will show you how to do that. And this is what it's gonna look like inside. Maybe I'll keep this here so you can see that. All right, so I'm opening my frog. Just enough so I can get to the inside of the head. Oops, and of course, forgot one step. 
I'm going to fold it back down again. Do -do -do. We want to mark where the eyes go, where the eyes go on this guy. So take a Sharpie and we're going to put two LEDs here. And it's actually helpful if it bleeds through to the other side of the paper so you can see where you're working. So now I have opened up my frog and opened up the bottom enough that I can get the sides open. There we go. All right. So I've opened up my frog. I'm going to use some red LEDs for the eyes on this one. And I'm going to just test them on the battery to make sure that the battery is good, that the LEDs are good. And also, um, Sandy, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but if you try to use two different color LEDs on one battery, they don't always light up. And I think that has to do with the voltages being different. Yeah, so the voltages having... are just a little different and that can right. that'll cause all the energy to go to the lower voltage one and it'll skip the other. Okay, so here I have a a white LED with a red LED. And you'll see it's not lit up, but when I take the red one off, then the white one does indeed light up. So you need to test them if you're gonna try something fancy with two different LEDs. And you want LEDs with um, long leads, long wires, if you can find them. And testing them is so important. I learned that lesson with my light up sunglasses the other week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I test my battery in advance and it didn't work on camera. Yep. Okay, so we're going to stick the eyes in from the um, what's going to be the right side of the frog. And as Sandy mentioned, the longer leads are the positive. I'm not sure you can see this on the camera. But for both of these LEDs, you want the longer lead to be pointing towards the frog's nose. So I'm going to turn it back so it's not upside down to you. All right, so longer LED lead wire is going to go towards the nose. And I'm just going to poke it right through the paper and push it all the way down. And same thing with the other one. Very important that they're both facing the same way. So there's the eyes and they're still a little loose. So we're gonna flip this over and attach it. Okay, so here's where we make the clamshell kind of idea. We're going to take the bottom wires, which are the shorter wires, which are the negative, And we're just going to fold them right down to the paper and we'll tape them on later. And then the positive wires, we're gonna bend them up a little bit and they are going to stick up above. So we're actually going to cross these and make the top of that clamshell. And I like using the copper tape for this. Um, I don't know why it folds a little bit better. And again, if you just peel the tape off of the paper, it's a little more flexible than the paper and that works a little better. And you don't even need to cut this. You can just rip that very easily. And it doesn't need to be neat. You just wanna take the two positive leads which are the top wires, which are the longer wires, and wrap this around just so that they stay together. So you can see that there, they're just stuck together. And maybe I'd make it a little bit neater because we don't want it to touch the negative wires and cause any kind of a short circuit. So you can see it's sticking up above the paper there. And then I'm going to take another piece of copper tape. And I'm just going to tape these two negative leads right to the paper. So you can kind of see now I've got the top and the bottom and we're going to be able to fold them and they're going to sandwich that battery right in there. So the battery is going to be positive side up in this one with the plus showing if you can see the plus there. And I just use regular tape. You want non-conductive tape for this part just to hold it in place. And I'm only gonna put it on the bottom of the battery because we want to leave the metal exposed 
because the electricity needs to be able to flow through the conductive part, which is the metal. So we have a question about um, conductive tape. So you are using a copper conductive tape for this, right? Right, with conductive glue, which That's really is important, important to note. Um, I have made these with aluminum foil tape, which uh, I think is actually a trick I got from Scrappy Circus. And because the glue on aluminum foil tape that just comes from a hardware store for heating uses um, is not conductive, you need to fold under the metal a little bit to make sure that you have um, the conductive part touching everything. So we've got conductive copper tape holding the positive leads together, holding the negative leads down. The negative, what I'd like to think of as the waffly side of the battery is touching the copper tape, which is connected to the negative leads and through that conductive glue, that should all be making a good circuit. And then this should be able to, when I fold everything back up, actually I'm gonna fold this down so that it is almost touching, but not quite. And actually we can see that I don't know if you can see that, but when I touch it, my circuit is good and everybody, all my LEDs are lit up. There we go. All right, so now I just need to fold it back up. And this is where you need to do a little bit of troubleshooting because you need to get it so that it is only lighting up when you are pressing the frog down. So first let's just get him into jumping position. And let's see, okay. All right, he's got one eye lit up. All right, oh, now it's, okay, this is perfect. So if it was lit up when you didn't want it to be, you open it back up and you make sure there's a little bit of a gap there. But I think I accidentally got it to be perfect. And so it only lights up when you press it down and then then he hops. I think the uh, LEDs and the battery actually kind of weighted it a little better to give it better hopping action there. <laughs> He's got good jumping action there. So awesome. So that's it. Very nice. I love, I love the classic origami frog and I love being able to give it that awesome, um, that really fantastic, you know, uh, light up action too. So we did have a question about um, nylon conductive tape. I used, that was the type of tape, the maker tape that I used for our Firefly project. Kathy then used the copper tape that you can often find. And for the next project, our um, butterfly, um, I'm actually using maker tape again. And let me tell you why actually, because this project in my book, in the big book of maker camp projects actually is a Luna moth. Um, and I use copper tape for it. But I was able to make the design nicer because the original design had the battery on the wing here. And I, it was always a little clunky. But when I tried to wrap the tape around to create the circuit on the, on the underside, I kept getting torn tape and it was crumbling on me. So for this one, today I'm using maker tape because it does actually, that flexibility allows me to hide the battery underneath. And I think that that's just a little more elegant for my butterfly. So um, it's really a matter of preference and you know what kind of project you're doing. I know Kathy from Maker Fair, you did that great no sew um, light up cuff, and for that you right. used the nylon tape because you can stick that right onto fabric and it's flexible. So it's a really good option for that kind of a project. So it really kind of comes down to what you're doing, what kind of tape is best. And you know, you can use, as, as Kathy pointed out, the aluminum foil tape you can get at the store or even strips of aluminum foil from you know, the grocery store. It's really just, some are gonna be a little easier to use than others, <laughs> you know? Um, all right, so let's show you how to make your uh, light up butterfly and then we'll talk books. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see, second time's the charm, still working. All right, that's nice. I'm always excited when my technology decides to behave for more than a moment or two. Okay, so here is our little butterfly. And this one, again, I, I, this one works as kind of a switch that when you press the body together, oh, you get that light up action. So this one takes a little bit more work than the last, but it's still not a very, um, it's not a super complicated origami fold. This one, you do have to do a lot of folds to kind of 
um, prepare the paper to get all the creases. So we're gonna start with our paper as a diamond and we're gonna fold, mountain fold like that. And give that a really good crease. As Kathy mentioned, you wanna give this a really good crease. Rotate 90 degrees. There's that little bit of math for you folks making this a steam project. Um, and you're gonna fold again. Get that, crease that really nicely so that you should have these four folds as a diamond. Now we're gonna take our tip and we're gonna fold it into the center and give that a really good crease. We're gonna do that for each, rotate 90 degrees. Give that a good crease, rotate 90 degrees. The math teacher in me guys, I can't, I can't help it. I have to have to point out the angles. All right, and rotate 90 degrees once again. You want to, with this one, be as precise as you can. The firefly is a little more forgiving than the, the butterfly. Okay, so now we can open this up. We're gonna flip it and we're gonna basically lay it down as a square, okay? Now, we're gonna make some rectangles. So we're gonna take the top, and I, I'm upside down, aren't I? I'm doing it again. Here we go, top <laughs> to center. My apologies, I'm working upside down today. And you're just gonna fold that nicely. Good crease, fold the other one in. And this I'm told is a French door style fold. Doesn't sound very Japanese, but I'm gonna go with it because it's pretty good and descriptive there. Now we're gonna do that rotate 90 degrees again. And we're gonna create a square by bringing each side into center again. Creasing well and up to the center increasing that very well. Okay, now we're gonna do kind of like Kathy did for the um, legs on the frog. You're gonna come in here and pull that point out. All right, and we're gonna do that on each of those points. Flip and go in there again, pull that point and pull the point until we end up with a six sided hexagon, kind of a lopsided one, admittedly, it's not symmetrical, but six sided nonetheless. Okay, great. I'm going to flip my page because I always have my, my cheat sheet. I've got the book with me just in case. All right, we're going to rotate. 90 degrees again, and we're gonna fold down. So we're just taking this little piece, which would have been kind of like the legs or the arms on the frog. Take that down, fold it down, and like that. And at this point, I'm trying to remember. Yes, at this point I flip, and I'm gonna fold this right down like this. So I'm taking the top, so I folded these out, flip, and I'm gonna fold this upper portion to line up. So you can see now that the body's coming together for our, our butterfly. Okay, these are gonna be the back feathers, or the back, not feathers, back wings, these are gonna be our front wings. Now we're gonna fold this over to make, and again, it's a geometry teacher in me, I really can't help it, an isosceles triangle. Fold that nicely, crease this well at this point. Take a moment to, as Kathy said, smash it. Okay, so where I'm holding it here, this is going to be the body of my um, butterfly. And I'm just checking my reference. So uh, I'm gonna try turning it so you guys can see this. We're gonna open, and this is gonna be the channel where we're gonna put our electronics right in here. So what we wanna do is fold it so that it's wider towards the head, more narrow, and kind of give it a little bit of a triangular shape. And depending on how much space you want to give yourself to work, you can kind of adjust that fold. So I'm just showing you from the top what's happened there. Now I'm going to try to make this neat and fold it roughly the same on the other side, creasing it well as I go. And I should be able to open this up. Aha, I have done it. And now we've got the basic of our basic shape of our moth 
or our butterfly. So there you go. Show it around that way. Okay. Now, in here, in here is where we're going to actually put our electronics. And like I said, if you're doing this for the first time, you may want to make this channel a little bit larger. It's, it's up to you. Okay. I've got my LEDs. And as Kathy demonstrated, you can power more than a single um, LED from a battery, but they do kind of need to be the same color. So I'm going to test my, my uh, as I learned the hard way, test my LEDs. Good. Now for these, I don't even need to do anything as far as um, turning my, my, uh, my leads. They're just fine. I'm going to leave them straight. I am going to cut myself four little pieces of the maker tape, which will help me attach everything. Oh, stick into my scissors. My scissors need to be cleaned. They are definitely in need of some cleaning. It's that time of the year, right? All right. So when I lay my um, LEDs in, it's really important that I go in the correct direction because as you can see here, it's these two and these two, when they make a connection, that's what turns our switch on. That's what closes our circuit and creates the light up. So I need the two positive leads to be together and the two negative leads to be together for this to work. So when I do this, I'm going to make sure, if you can see, I hope it's close up enough. I am putting the positive to the outside here and the negative to the inside. And you can just use your fingers and kind of spread them out just a tiny bit if you need to. And then I'm gonna reverse it for the other one. So I'm going to put the positive to the top and the negative down inside the channel. And you'll notice I'm leaving them hanging off the butterfly a little bit because you wanna give yourself some space to kind of bend them away so that when you fold, they have a little bit of play. And if you want pictures of this, I just wrote it up to put on um, the Maker Camp project site. So um, it's a little different than in my book, but not, by, by, not too much. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and use these little pieces of tape. And I'm gonna use Kathy's trick of lifting the tape from the adhesive, I really gotta just stop biting my nails. I think that's really the solution. <laughs> Anybody else a nervous nail bite fire? Oh, it's terrible, it's a terrible habit. I know, like this is what you guys wanna hear about, right? Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is banter to myself in an empty room. Okay, there we go. And you notice how I used my finger and my fingernail just to really get good contact there. You wanna take a moment to, to make sure it's well attached. Now it is very important, and I believe Kathy pointed this out too, you do not want your negative and positive tape to touch. That'd be um, a problem. Ugh, my goodness, I am not doing well with the tape today. I got it. Little piece of tape here. I'm gonna blame it on having to work upside down. <laughs> oh, see how I almost, I almost let them touch? Do not let them touch. I'm gonna just lift this up. This is the nice thing too about these tapes especially I find the maker tape is pretty forgiving. It's a little flexible there. So if I need to wiggle stuff around, I can. Okay, pressing that down. Now I'm gonna get my other one. And remember, I wanna reverse the placement. So I want my negative inside and my positive outside. Give me that little space. And it's not so, bit, so much of a big deal if the two negatives on the inside of the channel end up touching. That's not gonna cause too many problems. It's really that you don't want the negative and the positive to touch at this point. And here we go. This is admittedly more challenging to do on camera <laughs> than it is just to do in real life. And this, I'm gonna have to slide over a little bit. I apologize, my friends. Didn't get it right the first time. Isn't that a metaphor for life though? I'm just gonna wrap this. So I just wrapped a little bit of this around so I can get that extra space in there. This is what I mean by you might want to give yourself a little more space on, for your channel if you need it. And last piece. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to have to do like I do for my students in the makerspace and cut my tape and have it hanging from the side of the desk next time. Okay. 
And here we go. Whew, home stretch. Just spreading that out a little bit and taping it down. Okay. Believe it or not, that's actually kind of the most challenging part. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to connect to my battery on the back. And all you really need to know is that you want to go from one of the negatives and one of the positives. So I'm going to go ahead and do my positive first. And I'm just going to kind of measure the tape again, about that much. Don't need a whole lot. And this is, this is part of why I like the maker tape for this particular project. It's got the flexibility that makes this very, very easy. So I'm going to go from my positive right over and basically right on down the back to a nice spot where I can attach my battery. So my battery will go here again, positive down. And we'll use the same technique that we did before of a little loop, but I'm going to wire the other side first. And so I'm going to the second LED, going to go over from my negative, and I'm going to give myself a little extra because I have to come over here to the battery. My super formal measuring skills there. Now remember, you do not want to attach, well, I guess you probably could attach the maker tape to um, just one LED, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think it works better this way. So coming across again. Now, here we go. We got to learn an important thing about maker, uh, about using any of these conductive tapes for a circuit. We're going to do a fold. So what you do is you're going to come back at a 45 degree angle and then fold, trying not to get your fingers stuck in there like that. Okay. Now it is time to put my battery on. I'm just going to, um, again, one more tiny piece of maker tape that I'm going to do the sticky loop to hold my battery in place. You can, of course, um, if you prefer, just use a bit of uh, scotch tape or um, invisible tape for this. Works just great. And uh, if you don't wanna use a loop of the tape. So I just folded that over, made a little loop, sticky side out. And positive side, whoop, positive side down. Negative comes on over. Oh, yep, see I did. Yeah, see, they're touching here. <laughs> that is the problem. But if I wiggle that over a little bit, well, you know what? Yep, they're touching. See, I told you, you got to be more careful about that. And what do I do? I'm not careful about it. Okay, let me fix this. But you get the idea. This is... Uh, I admit a little more challenging to do on the camera than I expected. I practiced it. I did not practice it for the document camera. Lesson learned. I'm just going to wiggle this over a little bit, wiggle this one over if I can. Trying. <laughs> that one wants to light up and the other one does not because things. Sandy, what's touching there? Is it just, is it that the negative leads are touching? Yeah, the or two that... negative leads are touching that seems to be lighting the circuit. Huh. Yeah, that's a bit weird, right? <laughs> it shouldn't matter, but no. it is. Yeah. Hmm. So this one, we'll just go with this one right now. So you can see here, I did a better job of keeping them separate. And then when you close them, they go ahead and light up. But I must have... I'm shorting it just a little bit. And then what I like to do is just take, again, the binder clip and just clip that under there. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm having a repeat of my sunglasses. Come on. There we, there we go. Um, and there you go. You've got your light up butterfly like that. And I like to just kind of leave those sitting like that. The, the binder clip makes nice little legs for them. Okay. <laughs> Yay, switching back. Whew, it's getting hot in here. I am, oh, I didn't switch my camera, sorry. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Yay. So I do have other origami projects in 
the big book of maker is that on camera the big book of maker camp projects and kathy tell us all about uh, kathy has lots of great stuff <laughs> yeah so i have paper inventions which has a whole chapter of light up paper projects as well as um things that are just artistic like quilling and um, actually, I have a paper generator in here that's really fun and all kinds of other projects involving paper. I also have um, published by Make edible inventions, fabric and fiber inventions, and musical inventions. And those are all books with projects that are great for kids and that use simple materials for the most part. Um, and I also have two other books from Nomad Press. I have Boss that is about robotics and video games. So all kinds of maker books on different topics. And you can also find Kathy's amazing work on the Adafruit website, on Maker Camp projects, on Make projects. So, I mean, I, I've got to just tell you this quick little story. So when I first started doing maker education, Kathy's books were the first ones I found and oh. I fell in love with them and I used them for many years with Maker Camps. And when I got to meet you at Maker Fair the first time, it was very hard not to fangirl. So it's Aww. like very exciting to get to do this with you today and um, get to share our love of all this fun steam stuff. So <laughs> um, I guess any other questions about origami light up circuits? Last chance to ask. <laughs> um, and I did see that Joshua did mention that their um, Brown Dog Gadgets has some really great stuff for 3D origami circuits, um, including more projects and self-sticking motor, motors and things like that. Some fun stuff to play with. Maybe we'll have to, we'll have to come up with some new projects with that, right? Yeah, I wanna try those self-sticking motors. That sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, could you imagine if your, your frog could, I don't know, vibrate around on his own? <laughs> It'd be fun. All right, um, anything that you wanna add before we log off? No, it was great. It's fun to, always, always fun to see you and work with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if we can't be together at a Maker Fair, at least we can have Zoom, right? <laughs> yep. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for coming to Family Maker Camp today. And make sure you check back frequently. Check that website at makercamp.com. There are tons of free projects and some great workshops and classes, too, that you can sign up for. Um, I will be offering one on Make Codes, so that'll be fun. Um, and I know, Kathy, I'm sure you will be back with other fun projects as well. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>